Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about maps, or also known as hash table in some languages, key value pairs, pretty simple. But before going there, a big shout out again to pro.learncodeonline, all the people who have supported me there. Thank you so much, and this series is all dedicated for you. So in this video, we're going to talk about maps. They are really simple, and they basically are a format in the key value pairs, and key can be anything, value can be anything as well. And the retrieval are really fast in the maps because you know exactly what key you're looking for, and you can easily delete the values as well. It's a really simple one, uh, nothing too complicated as slices, but let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is 10th, and this is long, we are getting a good exercise file up here, and let's call this one as my maps. Okay, moving up, create a new file, and just like always, this one will be main.go, and let's open this up into integrated terminal, and just like always, let's initialize the mod, and say this is my maps, maybe. Okay, there we go, nice and easy. Now let's go ahead and declare a package. This one is going to be really, really simple one. We don't have too much to talk on maps, it's simple. Let's go ahead and provide a fumpt.print line and say maps in golang. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, let's go ahead and start by creating a simple map for us. And as I told you, maps are really simple. Let's go ahead and create a map for languages not the regular languages like English, Hindi, and French. We'll be going for programming languages, of course. And we'll use the same syntax uh, of using the keyword new or make. New actually gives you a lot of errors and you cannot just put the values because it's the zeroed started values, but we want to have a non-zeroed value. Remember the presentation we talked about? So we'll be using a make. And again, just like you can create a make, use make to create your slices, you can use make to create maps as well. But you have to define that, that yeah, I want to have a map up here, so you need to provide that. And then you need to say what will be my key and value. So my key will be string in this case, and my value is also going to be string. But don't you worry, in case you want to have a key of integer, that is also totally allowed to you. In my case, it makes much more sense to have string because I will have the string as the format, like JS is short for JavaScript, RB is short for Ruby and stuff like that. So I want to have that kind of map in my uh, languages map. Okay, moving on. So how do we add values to this? Really simple, you use the map and then you put, provide a key. For example, in this case, we'll have a JavaScript. And this one is also, the value is also going to be the string. So we are gonna go ahead and say, this will be JavaScript. Let's have a couple of duplicates. Three is fine because I'm not, remembering anything else much. So I'll be saying this is RB, and uh, this one will be obviously Ruby, and uh, we will have PY, for obviously you know that, for Python. Okay, so now we have a couple of values. We can actually do experiment and find out the syntax to find one value or do a little bit more on that. So let's do a fumpt.print line, and first let's have all the values and see how it does go actually prints out all the values. So we're gonna say list, of course, in the double quotes, my bad. List of all languages. And uh, let's use the syntax and say languages. Let's see that what it gives us as an output. So we're gonna say go run main.go and print that out. So this is what we get, list of all languages. It automatically depicts that this is a map and then we get the key value pairs. And remember all the values, you might have noticed this as well. These are not comma separated values in the Golang, especially in the array, maps, and pretty much everything. They are not comma separated. This is how the default, the printing pattern is. So this is it. Okay, let's go ahead and try to have an individual value. So we are gonna say that uh, JS, uh, this doesn't make sense, so we're gonna get rid of all of it. JS shorts four, and now I want to grab just one value, so in case you want to grab just one value, then you use the syntax of square brackets and you provide the key for that. In my case, the key is JS, it is in the string format, so I have to provide the string format. You can go ahead and provide integer, in case your key is for the integer format. Let's go ahead and clean this up, run that again, and obviously without any surprise, we get the value for it. And that's that's majority of the stuff that you'll be doing up here. Another thing that you might be doing is, apart from retrieving, you might want to delete the values. Adding the value is simple, just like this. You can keep on adding as much as you like, but deleting is interesting up here. Let's just say you want to go ahead and say delete some values, then you use the delete keyword itself, 
and we are going to say that I want to delete from the languages. You can use this for slices as well. So we're going to say I want to remove a key which is of Ruby. Sadly, Ruby needs to go away. So we're going to go ahead just like this. I can copy this line and uh, come here and paste this. And now obviously our languages will be less, a little bit less. And the legend Ruby is gone from our map. Okay. So this is it. This is basically it. And uh, now moves on to a part which you can avoid or you can just skip over. Now, although we haven't talked about the control flow of the program anywhere so far, no if else, no loops or nothing, but I just want to take a small liberty and show you that how you can loop through the maps uh, because obviously we'll have a repetition of that again in the loop section, but this is interesting. That's why I thought to show you. So let's go ahead and say uh, loops are interesting interesting in Golang. Just wanted to show that. So what's actually you are going to do, especially in the cases of maps, uh, let me show you that how loop actually works. This is actually basic for loop and it provides you a key as well as the value. And this is where the syntax gets interesting. You use these uh, walrus operator again, you use a keyword range and then you provide uh, the languages or whatever you are iterating over. And once you are done with that, you have access of keys and value and you can use that. This is almost like a for each loop in case you are familiar with JavaScript or there are other uh, similar variant of this one as well. So let's go ahead and use the fumpt. We're going to say printf. And we're going to say for, again, in double quotes, of course, we're going to say for key and then we are going to use placeholder so person v again remember there are lots of placeholders you can read them about the documentation or specification of the language we'll be going for person v person capital t is for type person v is for value itself and we have a couple of modes uh, we'll discuss them and we're going to say value is again another placeholder person v and of course uh, let's go ahead and give ourselves a new line so there we go now we need to fill these values so first is going to be filled up by key and the second one is going to be by index let's go ahead and say index not index actually value my bad and thank goodness the red squiggly line actually came to rescue there we go let's go ahead and run this one and it says uh, for key js value is javascript for key pi the value is python so obviously this is nice one more thing I want to show you, let's just say for some reason, remember I told you about the comma okay syntax? I told you that in some places you don't care about what the key is or what the first value is. This walrus operator is responsible for all these uh, comma okay syntax. So in case you don't care about the key, you can go ahead and just say underscore. And in this case, we are going to just remove uh, the person sign, yeah, just uh, having fun with this. So we have now only one placeholder to fill it up and that will be filled up by value. So remember this comma okay syntax is the entire meat part of the entire Golang syntax. Let's go ahead and run this again, just to prove the point for value V, which is a literal V now, having a value of JavaScript. So you can ignore anything at all by the underscore here. Okay, this was definitely a little bit ahead that I went, but I'll, I'll come back onto this loop section one more time again in the series where we'll have the control flow discussion of the program flow. But this is it for now. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.